In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the Science-Based Target Setting Tool. This Excel-based tool was created by the Science-Based Targets Initiative and is meant to help companies model science-based emission reduction targets for their operations and their value chain, scope 1, 2, and 3. This tool does not address targets that are not absolute emission reduction or intensity reduction targets, such as renewable electricity, supplier engagement, or customer engagement targets. For details on developing these kinds of targets, consult the FBTI criteria. First, some special sector considerations. Companies in the transport sector, such as transportation service providers and vehicle manufacturers that wish to model targets with the corresponding transport sector methods, may use the appropriate transport tools available on the SBTI website. Note that vehicle manufacturers must use the transport tool for modeling use phase emissions for sold vehicles and may not use this tool to model targets on those emissions. Additionally, financial institutions should not use this tool for setting scope 3 targets and should instead refer to the latest financial institutions guidance. And as of the recording of this video, the target setting methodology for the oil and gas sector is still in development and companies in this sector are not able to set targets at this time. Additionally, this demo uses version 1.2.1 of the tool, but viewers should use the most recent version of the tool available on the SBTI website. Please also make sure to consult the latest SBTI criteria when developing targets. Where there are inconsistencies between this video and the latest versions of the criteria, target validation protocol, and or sector-specific guidance, the latest versions of the SBTI materials take precedence. Finally, before using this tool, make sure to read the Terms of Use and Disclaimer in the README tab. The Quick Guide tab has high-level instructions on how to use the tool and also lists additional useful resources for companies setting targets. We highly recommend that companies review the SBTI criteria and target validation protocol in the process of developing targets for submission and validation by the SBTI. This demo focuses on the tabs called SBT tool and scope 3 tool. The SBT tab, the SBT tool tab allows companies to model targets using either the absolute contraction approach or the sectoral decarbonization approach or SDA for short. These targets cover scope 1 and 2 emissions, and for certain targets modeled with the power sector SDA, also certain scope 3 emission categories. The absolute contraction approach can be used to model targets covering scope 1 and or 2 for all sectors except the power sector. Minimum target ambition is defined, is defined by the percentage linear annual reduction of the target between the base year and the target year and is the same for all applicable companies. On the other hand, the sectoral decarbonization approach is available for certain sectors and allows companies in these sectors to model targets using sector-specific decarbonization pathways if they so choose. Companies for whom an SDA pathway does not yet exist can still use the absolute contraction approach to set targets with the current exception of oil and gas companies. For more information on the SDA, consult the methodologies paper on the SBTI website. We'll start with the absolute contraction approach. Targets covering scope 1 and or 2 that meet the minimum ambition here according to the absolute contraction approach are considered ambitious regardless of the sector the company is in. Electric utilities are the exception as they need to meet ambition under the power SDA. We'll select our base year as 2018 and target year as 2030. Our example company's base year scope 1 missions Scope 1 emissions are 7 million tons of CO2 equivalent, and the Scope 2 emissions are 1 million tons. Once I've entered the base year emissions, I can scroll down to the outputs in Section 3. This section shows the minimum absolute reduction for a company's targets to be considered well below 2 degrees aligned and 1.5 degrees aligned. The tool also shows the projected emissions in the target year in numerical and graphical form. Most companies using the absolute contraction approach will choose to set one target covering both scope 1 and scope 2, as the ambition requirements for the scopes are the same. If your company wishes to express a scope 1 and 2 emission reduction target in intensity terms, it may do so if the resulting absolute reduction meets ambition requirements. 
If our example company wants to reduce its scope one and two emissions per ton of product sold, it would provide in the submission form the tons of products sold in the base year and the projected tons sold in the target year. The SBTI target validation team would verify that the proposed intensity reduction and projected activity growth result in ambitious absolute emissions reductions, at least 30% in this example. Note that the SBTA also assesses forward-looking ambition from the most recent year available to the target year. The most recent completed GHG inventory provided must not be earlier than two years prior to the year of submission. The emission reduction target must amount to, at a minimum, a 2.5% linear annual reduction from the most recent year to the target year. We'll quickly show you how to use this tool to assess forward-looking ambition. Our company provided a 2020 inventory. By 2020, this company had reduced its scope one emissions to 5 million tons. You'll see now that this company needs to reduce its emissions to 4.5 million tons to meet forward-looking ambition. Recall that this company's base year is 2018 and its base year scope one and two emissions were 8 million tons. Therefore, in order to meet timeframe and forward-looking ambition, it must reduce from 8 million tons to 4.5 million tons, a reduction of 43.8%. Now we'll go over an example of setting a target with the sectoral decarbonization approach. The SDA scenario field corresponds to the emission scenario used to develop sectoral intensity decarbonization pathways. For modeling targets with the SDA for all sectors but the power sector, you must select ETP B2DS, the energy technology perspectives beyond two degrees scenario. Approved targets modeled with the sectoral decarbonization approach will receive a well below 2C target classification, except for power sector targets modeled with the 1.5C aligned pathway. For more information about the underlying data, check the references section of the README tab. Only certain sectors can be modeled with this tool. We will demonstrate modeling a target with a sectoral decarbonization approach using an example company in the cement sector. The general approach is similar for all sectors in the tool, but please consult relevant SBTI sector-specific guidance for the most accurate and up-to-date information. Let's go back to the same base year and target year as before and same base year emissions. You'll see now that the projected output measure field is available for input. If you assume that your company will grow at the same rate as the sector overall between the base year and target year, you should select fixed market share. If you have company specific growth projections, select instead target year output. We'll go with target year output for our example cement company. And we will input the actual base year and projected target year output. In order to model targets using the SDA, you must use the activity indicator unique to each sector. For the cement sector, the metric is tons of cementitious product or tons of cement for short. Consult the SDA guidance for the exact definition of the activity indicator for your sector. For our cement company, the base year output is 10 million tons of cement, and we project to output 12 million tons of cement in the target year. Companies should input the emissions associated with the sectoral activity and should not include other emissions generating activities in the modeling exercise. Scope 1 and 2 emissions not covered by the SDA sector should not be modeled excuse me, should be modeled using the absolute contraction approach or another SDA pathway if relevant. Note that as of this demo, the SBTI recommends modeling emissions from purchased heat, steam, and cooling in scope one instead of scope two for targets modeled with the SDA. Now we can see the results for targets modeled using the SDA for the cement sector. These results are based on the selected base year and target year, base year and target year activity values in units of tons of cement and base year emissions. This first graph compares the projected activity of the cement sector, the sector power consumption, and the sector's scope one and two emissions intensity pathways. The two graphs on the right show the absolute reduction and intensity reduction pathways for this particular company, as well as the sectoral intensity pathway. The most useful results for target setting are in the table labeled IEA ETP B2DS scenario. This table shows the minimum scope one and scope two emission ambition for absolute and intensity targets. 
Our cement company may submit separate scope one and scope two targets or a combined scope one and two target, the latter of which is preferred. In this example, the tool calculates a minimum scope one and two emissions intensity reduction of 30.9% to meet the ambition of the SDA pathway. The absolute contraction approach and SDA give different results for minimum allowable ambition. Recall that using the absolute contraction approach over the same time frame with the same scope one and two emissions, the minimum absolute reduction was 30%. Here, using SDA, it's 17.7%. Using the SDA pathway takes into account sector-specific considerations and derives ambition based on convergence to a sectoral emissions intensity. Note, however, that if this company wanted to be classified as 1.5 C aligned, they would need to set their targets using the absolute contraction approach we covered before. This applies to all companies modeling scope one and two targets with the SDA, except for companies in the power sector. The SBTI is currently developing more sector specific resources aligned with the 1.5 C temperature goal. Now we'll move on to setting targets on scope three emissions. The accepted target setting methods for scope three emission reduction targets are absolute contraction, economic intensity, and physical intensity. The absolute contraction method is very similar to what was just reviewed for scope one and two. As of the recording of this video, the minimum ambition using absolute contraction for scope three is 1.23% linear annual reduction compared to the 2.5% minimum linear annual reduction for scope one and two. Other than that, the absolute contraction method is modeled the same as for scope one and two. So for this video, we'll focus on economic and physical intensity targets. Economic intensity targets are in terms of greenhouse gas emissions per unit value added, or GVA. These targets are considered ambitious if they result in at least 7% year-on-year reduction of emissions per unit value added. Note that unlike minimum rates for absolute contraction and physical intensity, which we'll get to in a little bit, the minimum ambition for GVA targets is a compound annual rate of reduction and not a linear annual rate. If we input a base year, a target year, base year output in terms of dollars of value added and scope three base year covered emissions, section three will output the minimum target value for a GVA target. Besides absolute contraction and economic intensity, companies can set physical intensity targets. Such targets are considered ambitious if they do not result in absolute emissions growth and lead to linear annual intensity improvements of at least 2%. Under this approach, a company can use any custom physical unit that is representative of the company's activities and relates to the company's scope three emissions. Our example company wants to set targets on scope three emissions intensity per ton of product sold. We'll enter the base year amount and the projected target year amount of product sold. Section four outputs the minimum target value under the physical intensity approach, which in this case is 24%. And that's it for this demo of the science-based target setting tool. If you run into any functionality issues or bugs, please get in contact with us at info at sciencebasedtargets.org so we, continuously, we can continuously improve the tool. Consult the SBTI website at sciencebasedtargets.org for more information about ongoing development of sectoral tools and target setting methods.